we're going to remind ourselves of multiplication, subtraction, and addition with fractions. You've done this all before, so this is just a very quick reminder of how to do it. We're going to start with multiplication because that's really easy. Multiplication of fractions, straightforward. If you multiply two fractions together, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. Now you can go ahead and just work this out and you can go and say 3 times 8 is 24 and you can go and work out 16 times 9. That's a bit of a bigger calculation but if you go and work it out you'll see it's 144 and once we get to that that is our answer 24 over 144 but of course we like to write our fraction in simplest form so we've got to go and see if we can divide anything into the top and the bottom. Um, I can see quite easily that 12 will go into 144 and it'll also go into 24. So 12 goes into 144 12 times and 12 goes into 24 2 times. So my answer is 2 over 12, but that's still not in simplest form because I can invite, divide 2 into top and bottom. So I'll carry on and do that. 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 12 6 times. So my final answer is actually 1 over 6. And this is completely fine, right? Multiply top, multiply bottom, get your answer, and then try and simplify. But actually, if you're a little smarter with how you do things, you can save yourself from having to do such revolting multiplications and simplifications. So let's just do it again quickly um, and see how if we just do a bit of cancelling along the way, simplifying really along the way, we can actually save ourselves having to do really big gory multiplication. So let's have a look. Multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator. That's always going to be the case. But now this is where I'm going to be a little smarter. Instead of actually going ahead and doing each of these multiplications, what I'm going to do is see I've got a whole lot of stuff at the top and I've got a whole lot of stuff at the bottom. And we know with fractions, if we divide top and bottom of a fraction by the same thing, we don't change the fraction. So what I'm going to do is see if there's anything I can divide into the numerator and into the denominator at this point. So I don't have to do this huge multiplication of 16 times 9. So if I have a look here, look, I can see I've got a 16 and I've got an 8. And I know 8 can go into both of them. So I'm going to first do that. Divide the top by 8. Well, this will become a 1 then. Divide the bottom by 8 and this will become a 2. I can also see here that I've got the 3 and the 9, and there's something that can divide into both of those, which is 3. So I'll divide 3 into the numerator, and I'll divide 3 into the denominator. Now, I can't see anything else that I can simplify, nothing that I can divide into numerator and denominator. And so what I can do now is go ahead and get to my answer, and I'll get 1 times 1 at the top, which is 1, and 2 times 3 at the bottom, which is 6. So just doing a little simplifying along the way meant I didn't have to do really big multiplications and then a long, complicated simplification. I want you to try one now. This is in your homework books. So you've got 1 and 1 sixth and you're multiplying it by 2 and 1 seventh and I want you to get the answer. The first thing I want you to do before you start is just turn each of those mixed numbers into an improper fraction. If you do that, the rest will follow easily. So pause the video now, get the answer, and then we'll check it together. Okay, so as I suggested, you first turn these two things into mixed from the mixed number into an improper fraction. So 1 and 1 sixths, we're going to say 1 times 6 is 6 plus 1. We get 7 over 6. And then with this one, we say 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15. So we have 15 over 7. All right, multiplication of fractions, multiply the top, multiply the bottom. I, you can just go ahead and multiply out now, and then you can simplify afterwards. But I prefer not to have to do long, complicated um, multiplication, so I'm going to see if there's anything I can simplify at that stage. Well, I can see, obviously, I can divide top and bottom of this fraction by 7, and then I can divide top and bottom of the fraction by 3. So this will divide by 3, and I'll get 5 here. This will divide by 3, and I'll get 2 here. And so I can get simply to my answer. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. So the answer is 5 over 2. That's an improper fraction. I can turn the improper fraction into a mixed number if I want to. 2 goes into 5 twice with 1 half left over. Okay, adding and subtracting fractions requires a bit more effort. If the denominators are the same, there's no problem. For example, we can see here, if we've got 1 8 and we've got 2 8 right? So if we've got 1 8 and we add 2 8 to it, in other words, we put 1 8 and 2 8 together, you can see when we put them together, we get 1, 2, 3 8 So if your fractions have the same denominator, no problem. But what about something like this? When we've got 1 8 and 1 quarter, well, obviously, there's no problem. We can put them together if we wanted to, but we can't say how many pieces of a particular type we have because we've got two different types of pieces. We can't add them together because we've got two different types of pieces. 
What we have to do is we have to be able to see that one quarter is exactly the same as two eighths. And then we can easily say that if we've got one eighth and one quarter, well, it's the same as taking one eighth and putting it together with two eighths, and we'll get the three eighths. So here is the absolutely crucial thing. When our fractions have got different denominators, we can't add them together because they are different size pieces. So what we need to do is find a common denominator so that we can add together. And the same will work for subtraction. How does this work in practice? Well, let's look at this example here. Um, again, when we've got a mixed number, the easiest thing is just to turn it into an improper fraction first. So here we go. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. We get 7 over 3 plus 1 over 6. We've got different denominators, different size fractions, so we can't add them together at this point. We need to find a common denominator. To find a common denominator, we look at 3 and we look at 6. We write out the multiples of each of these. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Let's see if that's enough. With 6, we go 6, 12. Oh, well, hang on. Actually, I'm looking for your lowest common multiple, and I can already see that 6 is sitting in both of these lists. So that's going to be what I use as my common denominator. Okay, so I need to take each fraction and write it as a fraction with 6 as the denominator. Well, 1 sixth is done, right? I don't need to do any more work to make that into a fraction with 6 as the denominator. 7 thirds, I've got to work a little bit. Well, what did I do from 3 to get to 6? I multiplied by 2. What I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So I get 14 over 6. So 7 thirds plus 1 sixth is exactly the same thing as saying 14 sixths plus one sixth, and I'll get my answer of 15 sixths. Again, I should simplify, and I can see that three can go into top and bottom. So if I divide the top of my equation by uh, fraction by three, and the bottom of my fraction by three, I will get my answer of five over two. Let's do another one quickly. One and one sixth minus one ninth. Well, one, let's, again, I say always just turn the mixed numbers into improper fractions. It'll probably make it easier. So this, um, to turn it into an improper, will become 1 times 6 is 6 plus 1 gives you 7. So we have 7 sixths minus 1 ninth. We want to be able to find a common denominator. So we go and write out the multiple. So we get 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Let's see if that's enough. Let's go with the 9s. 9, 18, 27. Actually, I can already see a number that's appeared in both of those lists. It's 18. So that will be my common denominator. I then go and try and write I go and write each of these fractions with the common denominator of 18. Well, for this one here, what have I done to this? I've taken 6 and multiplied it by 3, so I have to do the same to the numerator and I'll get 21. For this one, I've multiplied by 2 and so I need to multiply by 2, so I'll get 2 18ths. Now I can rewrite this whole sum in terms of 18, and I'll get 21 over 18 minus 2 over 18, and I'll get my answer of 19 over 18. Okay, quickly try this one in your homework books. 1 6 for 7 8. Pause the video now. All right, here you should have said that what you need to do is go 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, etc. 8, 16, 24, I can see I've come across my common denominator. 1 6 is going to be the same as 4 over 24. And 7 8 to turn it into something over 24, you're going to get 21 over 24. So you'll get 4 over 24 plus 21 over 24, and your answer will be 25 over 24.